Chapter 1. Early Life In the heart of Europe, in a grand city called Vienna, a baby girl was born to the royal family of Austria on May 13, 1717. Her name was Maria Theresa. She was not just any royal baby, but a very important one. Why, you ask? Because she was destined to become one of the most powerful women in European history. Maria Theresa was the eldest daughter of Emperor Charles VI of Austria and his wife, Elizabeth Christine of Brunswick Wolfentil. She was born in the famous Hofburg Palace, a large, beautiful building where many Austrian rulers have lived. As a young girl, she was often seen playing in the wide, magnificent corridors and vast gardens of the palace. Maria Theresa's childhood was quite different from other children's. Being a royal child meant that she had many duties and responsibilities. From a young age, she learned how to behave like a royal. She was taught to walk, talk, and even eat like a future queen. It was not easy, but Maria Theresa was a smart and quick learner. She had a big family. In total, Maria Theresa had three brothers and sisters. They were named Maria Anna, Leopold, and Maria Amelia. She loved her family very much and enjoyed spending time with them. Together, they would play games, read stories, and explore the palace gardens. But Maria Theresa was always aware that she had a special role to play in the family, as she was the eldest. Her parents, the emperor and empress, were very busy people. They ruled over a large part of Europe, called the Habsburg Empire. This empire was so big it covered many countries we know today, like Austria, Hungary, and parts of Italy. However, they always found time to be with their children, teaching them about the empire and their role as its future leaders. So, Maria Theresa's childhood was filled with learning, playing, and understanding the importance of her position. It was a time that prepared her for the great responsibilities she would face later on in her life. Being born a princess might sound like a fairy tale, but for Maria Theresa, it was the beginning of a journey that would lead her to become a great queen. Maria Theresa, the future queen, didn't just play and spend time with her family. She also studied hard. You see, being a queen wasn't just about wearing beautiful dresses and shiny crowns. It was also about making smart decisions and understanding the needs of the people. And to do that, Maria Theresa needed a good education. Her parents, the emperor and empress, understood this well. They wanted Maria Theresa to learn everything she would need to become a good leader. So, they hired the best tutors in the land to teach her. One of her tutors was a man named Johann Gottfried von Bartenstein. He was a wise man and a great teacher. He taught her about politics, the art of ruling a kingdom. Maria Theresa listened carefully to his lessons and asked many questions. She wanted to understand everything about being a good ruler. But it wasn't all about politics. Maria Theresa also learned about languages. She learned to speak French, which was the language used by many European rulers at that time. She also learned Latin, the language of learning and science. This made it easier for her to communicate with different people and to read many books. Maria Theresa also studied history. She loved hearing about great kings and queens from the past. She was especially interested in stories about strong women like herself. These stories taught her many lessons about leadership and courage. The future queen also learned about music and the arts. She learned to play the harpsichord, a popular musical instrument of that time. She also learned to dance, which was an important part of royal life. Despite her busy schedule, Maria Theresa always found time to read. She loved reading books about many different topics. Reading helped her to relax and to learn new things. It was one of her favorite hobbies. Education was an important part of Maria Theresa's life. Her parents and tutors made sure that she learned everything she needed to be a great queen. And Maria Theresa was a good student. She worked hard, asked many questions, and always tried to learn more. She knew that one day, all her learning would help her to be a good ruler. In those days, marriages among royal families were not like the marriages we know today. Often, they were arranged by the parents, not just for love, but also for politics. Maria Theresa's marriage was arranged in this way, too. 
When Maria Theresa was just 15 years old, her parents decided that she would marry Francis Stephen of Lorraine, a young duke from a nearby kingdom. Francis was chosen not just because he was a kind and handsome man, but also because the marriage could bring two powerful families closer together. Maria Theresa and Francis met for the first time at a royal gathering. Despite their marriage being arranged, they soon found that they liked each other. They enjoyed talking about their interests like music, dance, and books. They also discussed more serious topics like politics and their future roles as rulers. Their courtship, the time before they got married, was filled with these discussions and shared activities. They went for walks in the palace gardens, rode horses together, and even played music. Maria Theresa played the harpsichord while Francis listened and admired her talent. As the years passed, Maria Theresa and Francis developed a deep understanding and respect for each other. They saw that they both had a strong sense of duty and a desire to be good leaders. They also saw that they could learn a lot from each other. Finally, in 1736, when Maria Theresa was 19 years old, she married Francis Stephen. It was a grand wedding, with guests from many different kingdoms. There were grand feasts, beautiful music, and joyful dances. It was a happy day for both Maria Theresa and Francis. Though their marriage was arranged by their parents, Maria Theresa and Francis built a strong relationship based on respect, understanding, and shared interests. They knew they had big responsibilities ahead of them, but they also knew they could face them together. Their marriage was not just a political alliance, but also a partnership. Chapter 2. Becoming a Ruler Maria Theresa's life took a big turn in 1740. She was only 23 years old when her father, Emperor Charles VI, passed away. This was a very sad time for Maria Theresa. She had lost her father, a person she loved very much and who had taught her so much. But along with her personal grief, she also faced a huge challenge. She had to become the ruler of the Habsburg Empire. Maria Theresa was her father's oldest child. According to an agreement called the Pragmatic Sanction, she had the right to become the ruler after her father's death. But taking over the throne was not easy. There were some people who did not want a woman to rule. They thought that a woman could not be a strong and effective leader. Maria Theresa did not let these people stop her. She was confident and brave. She knew that she had been trained well for this job. She had studied politics, history, languages, and the arts. She had learned from her father's successes and mistakes. She had also seen her mother, the Empress, handle her duties with grace and intelligence. One of the first challenges Maria Theresa faced was from Frederick the Great, the King of Prussia. He did not believe in the pragmatic sanction and wanted to take some parts of Maria Theresa's kingdom for himself. This led to a big war known as the War of Austrian Succession. Maria Theresa showed her strength during this time. She did not back down. She stood up to Frederick and defended her kingdom. She proved that she was not just a woman but a strong and capable ruler. This period was a tough time for Maria Theresa. She had to fight for her right to rule, manage a war, and also handle the duties of running a large kingdom. But she faced all these challenges with courage and determination. She showed everyone that she was not just a queen by birth, but also a queen by her actions. The War of Austrian Succession was a very challenging time for Maria Theresa. This war was not just about land or power, but also about her right to be a queen. Just when Maria Theresa was beginning to rule, Frederick the Great of Prussia attacked. He wanted to take a piece of her kingdom called Silesia. This was a rich and beautiful area that Maria Theresa loved dearly. But Frederick was powerful, and his soldiers were strong. Maria Theresa was shocked. She had hoped for peace in her kingdom, not war. But she knew that she couldn't just let Frederick take Silesia. So she decided to fight back. This was not an easy decision. War is costly and dangerous. Many people can get hurt. But Maria Theresa believed in her right to rule and in protecting her kingdom. So she gathered her armies and prepared for battle. The war lasted for eight long years. There were many battles, many victories, and many losses. It was a hard time for Maria Theresa and her people. 
But throughout the war, Maria Theresa never gave up. She led her armies, made difficult decisions, and inspired her people with her bravery. Despite her best efforts, Maria Theresa could not completely defeat Frederick. In the end, she had to let him keep Silesia. This was a sad moment for her, but she knew that she had to make peace for the sake of her people. The War of Austrian Succession was a test for Maria Theresa. It challenged her strength, her courage, and her leadership. But through it all, Maria Theresa proved that she was a true queen. She showed her people and the world that she was ready to fight for her kingdom and her right to rule. It was a tough time, but it also made Maria Theresa a stronger and more determined ruler. Despite the odds and the challenges that came her way, Maria Theresa proved to be a strong and capable ruler. The War of Austrian Succession, though difficult, had showcased her strength, resilience, and leadership skills to all of Europe. After the war ended, Maria Theresa was more determined than ever to rule her kingdom well and bring prosperity and peace to her people. As the ruler of the Habsburg Empire, Maria Theresa had many responsibilities. She had to manage the kingdom's wealth, keep her people safe, and make laws to ensure justice. All these tasks were not easy, but Maria Theresa handled them with wisdom and grace. Maria Theresa paid close attention to her kingdom's wealth. She understood that a strong kingdom needed a strong economy. Therefore, she introduced new taxes to increase the kingdom's wealth. She also promoted trade and agriculture, helping her people to earn more and live better lives. Keeping her people safe was also important to Maria Theresa. She strengthened the kingdom's army, making sure they were well-trained and well-equipped. She also made treaties with other kingdoms to prevent more wars. Peace was very important to Maria Theresa. She didn't want her people to suffer because of war again. Justice was another area Maria Theresa focused on. She believed that all her people, whether rich or poor, should be treated fairly. She introduced new laws that protected the rights of her people. She also made sure that these laws were followed, showing her people that their queen cared about justice. Maria Theresa also found time for her personal life. She loved her husband, Francis, and their many children. Despite her busy schedule, she always found time to be with them. She taught her children about their responsibilities and shared her love for music and dance with them. The early years of Maria Theresa's rule were a time of change and growth. Despite the challenges she faced, she proved to be a wise and capable ruler. Her people admired her strength and courage. They felt safe and protected under her rule. Maria Theresa may have become a queen because of her birth, but she showed everyone that she was a queen because of her actions too. She was a queen who cared for her people, who fought for justice, and who brought peace and prosperity to her kingdom. Chapter 3. The Reforms Maria Theresa was not only a queen, but also a mother. She understood the importance of a good education from both these roles. She believed that every child in her kingdom should have the chance to learn and grow, just like her own children. This belief led her to make big changes in the way education was provided in Austria. Before Maria Theresa's rule, education in Austria was not very organized. Schools were run by different groups, like the church or the local community, and there were no common rules or standards. Some children got a good education, while others did not. Maria Theresa thought this was unfair. She believed that all children, whether they were rich or poor, should have the same opportunities to learn. So, Maria Theresa decided to reform, or change, the education system. She started by setting up a central education authority. This was like a big school board that would make sure all schools in Austria followed the same rules and standards. This was a big step as it helped to make education fair for everyone. Next, Maria Theresa made sure that all children in Austria had to go to school. This might seem normal to us today, but back then, it was a big change. Before this, many children, especially poor ones, did not go to school because their families needed them to work. Maria Theresa believed that every child should have the right to learn, no matter their family situation. Maria Theresa also improved the quality of teaching. She knew that for children to learn well, they needed good teachers, 
So, she set up training schools for teachers where they could learn the best ways to teach children. In addition to reading, writing, and arithmetic, Maria Theresa wanted children to learn about other things too. She introduced subjects like history, geography, and languages into the school curriculum. She believed that a broad education would help children to understand the world better and to become good citizens. These changes were not easy to make. There were many people who did not agree with Maria Theresa's ideas. But the queen was determined. She knew that education was important for the future of her kingdom. She wanted to give every child the chance to learn and to grow, just like her own children. Maria Theresa's education reform had a big impact on Austria. It helped to create a fair and high-quality education system that benefited all children. It showed her people that their queen cared about them and their future. Through this reform, Maria Theresa left a lasting legacy, not just as a queen, but also as a champion of education. Maria Theresa knew that a strong kingdom needed a strong economy. This was not just about having lots of gold and jewels, but about making sure that everyone had enough to live a good life. To build a strong economy, Maria Theresa understood that she needed a fair and efficient system for collecting taxes, and so, she embarked on a journey of tax reform in Austria. Before Maria Theresa's time, the tax system in Austria was very uneven. The rich nobles, who had lots of land and wealth, often paid less tax than the poor farmers who worked on their lands. Maria Theresa thought this was unfair. She believed that everyone should contribute to the kingdom's wealth according to their means. So, Maria Theresa made changes to the tax system. She introduced a new law that required all people, including the nobles, to pay taxes based on their wealth. This meant that the rich had to pay more taxes, while the poor had to pay less. This was a big change, and not everyone was happy about it. The nobles, who were used to their privileges, protested against the new law. But Maria Theresa was not moved. She stood firm, believing in the fairness of her reforms. Maria Theresa also made sure that the taxes were collected efficiently. She set up a new department that was responsible for collecting taxes. This department made sure that everyone paid their taxes on time and that the money was used for the benefit of the kingdom. These tax reforms had a big impact on Austria. They helped to increase the kingdom's wealth, which allowed Maria Theresa to invest in other areas like education, the army, and infrastructure. They also helped to make the society more fair, as everyone contributed to the kingdom's wealth according to their means. Maria Theresa's tax reforms were not just about money. They were about justice and fairness. They showed her people that their queen cared about them and wanted to build a fair and prosperous kingdom. Through these reforms, Maria Theresa proved once again that she was not just a queen by birth, but a queen by action and conviction. Maria Theresa knew that a strong military was essential for the security and prosperity of her kingdom. Her experiences during the War of Austrian Succession had taught her the importance of a well-equipped and well-trained army. Therefore, she set out to implement military reforms in Austria that would ensure the safety of her people and the strength of her empire. Before Maria Theresa's rule, Austria's military was not as strong or organized as it could have been. There were differences in training, equipment, and strategies across the various parts of the empire. Maria Theresa recognized the need for standardization and improvement in these areas. First, she tackled the issue of organization. She established a central military authority that was responsible for overseeing the army's operations. This brought all of Austria's forces under a single command, allowing for better coordination and planning. Next, Maria Theresa focused on training. She believed that a soldier's skill was just as important as his courage. Therefore, she introduced a standard training program for all soldiers. This program emphasized discipline, fitness, and understanding of military tactics. This ensured that every soldier in her army was well prepared for battle. Maria Theresa also improved the equipment used by her soldiers. She introduced new types of weapons and uniforms that were more effective and comfortable. She also set up factories to produce these items in large quantities, ensuring that every soldier had the equipment they needed. 
In addition to these changes, Maria Theresa also introduced a new sense of pride and honor among her soldiers. She wanted them to see their role not just as a job, but as a duty to protect their homeland. She regularly visited her troops, praising their courage and expressing her gratitude for their service. These military reforms had a significant impact on Austria. The army became more organized, better trained, and better equipped. This increased their effectiveness in battle, enhancing the security of the empire. Maria Theresa's military reforms were another example of her dedication to her kingdom. She understood that a strong and capable military was crucial for the peace and prosperity of her people. Through these reforms, she once again showed her commitment to her duties as a queen and her care for her people. Her actions affirmed her reputation as a ruler who was not only strong and intelligent, but also deeply concerned about the well-being of her kingdom. Chapter 4. Personal Life Maria Theresa was not just a queen. She was also a wife and a mother. Her family was very important to her, and she found great joy in her marriage and her many children. Maria Theresa was married to Francis Stephen of Lorraine. Their marriage was not just a political arrangement. It was also a love match. Maria Theresa and Francis loved each other deeply. They supported each other in their duties and shared many happy moments together. Maria Theresa and Francis had 16 children together. This was a large family, even for their time. Maria Theresa loved all her children. She spent as much time with them as she could, even with her busy schedule as a queen. She taught them about their responsibilities and shared her love for music and dance with them. One of Maria Theresa's children was the famous Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette later became the Queen of France. She was known for her beauty and her extravagant lifestyle. Maria Theresa tried to guide her daughter, writing her letters filled with advice and love. Maria Theresa's family brought her much happiness, but also some sadness. Not all of her children lived to adulthood. Some died as babies, while others passed away when they were young. These losses were heartbreaking for Maria Theresa. She mourned deeply for each of her lost children. But despite these tragedies, Maria Theresa remained strong. She continued to love and care for her surviving children. Maria Theresa's family life shows us another side of her. It shows us a woman who loved deeply and who valued family. It shows us a mother who cared for her children and who grieved for them. It shows us a wife who loved her husband and supported him in their shared duties. It shows us that Maria Theresa was not just a queen, but also a loving wife and mother. Maria Theresa was not just a queen who ruled her kingdom, she was also a woman with her own hobbies and interests. Among these, her love for music and dance stood out. These interests brought joy to her life and provided a welcome respite from her royal duties. From a young age, Maria Theresa was exposed to the fine arts. Her parents, recognizing the importance of a well-rounded education, made sure she learned about literature, art, and music. Of these, it was music that captivated her the most. Maria Theresa learned to play the harpsichord and the violin, and her music lessons were among her favorite activities. As she grew older, Maria Theresa's love for music only deepened. She enjoyed various types of music, from the grand symphonies composed by masters like Mozart and Haydn to the simple folk songs sung by her people. She often attended concerts at her court and was known to invite musicians to perform for her. Maria Theresa also loved to dance. Dancing was a popular pastime in the royal courts of her time, and Maria Theresa was an enthusiastic participant. She was known for her grace and elegance on the dance floor. Even as she grew older and had many children, she never lost her love for dancing. But Maria Theresa's love for music and dance was not just a personal pleasure. She saw these art forms as important parts of her kingdom's culture and heritage. She patronized many musicians and dancers, supporting their work and helping to foster a rich culture of music and dance in her kingdom. Maria Theresa's hobbies and interests tell us more about who she was as a person. They show us a woman who found joy in music and dance, who appreciated the arts, and who believed in their importance. Through her love for these art forms, Maria Theresa added to the cultural richness of her kingdom, 
leaving a legacy that went beyond politics and governance. In her long life, Maria Theresa experienced many joys, but she also faced her share of sorrow and loss. Her strength and resilience during these times of grief give us a deeper understanding of her character and the challenges she overcame. One of the most significant losses in Maria Theresa's life was the death of her beloved husband, Francis Stephen. He was not only her spouse, but also her confidant and ally, a supportive presence throughout her reign. His death in 1765 was a severe blow to Maria Theresa. She was so heartbroken that she began to wear black and continued to do so for the rest of her life as a sign of her enduring grief. Maria Theresa also faced the profound pain of losing her children. Despite having 16 children, only 10 survived into adulthood. Losing a child is an agonizing experience for any parent, and Maria Theresa was no exception. Each loss was a deep personal tragedy that affected her greatly. One of the most notable of these losses was the death of her daughter, Maria Josepha from smallpox. This event was especially traumatic because Maria Theresa had opposed her daughter's marriage, which had brought Maria Josepha into contact with the disease. Despite these losses, Maria Theresa showed remarkable resilience. She faced her grief with courage and continued to fulfill her duties as a queen. She found comfort in her faith and her remaining family members and she never let her personal tragedies interfere with her responsibilities to her kingdom. She also used her experiences with loss to develop empathy for her subjects, understanding that they too faced similar struggles and losses. In the face of loss and grief, Maria Theresa displayed a strength and determination that further solidified her status as one of history's most respected rulers. Her ability to navigate personal tragedy while still leading her kingdom is a testament to her character and her enduring legacy. Even in the face of profound loss, Maria Theresa stood tall as a symbol of resilience and courage. Her personal grief, while deeply challenging, served to humanize her, showing that she was not just a queen, but also a woman who faced the trials and tribulations of life with grace and fortitude. Chapter 5 Later Years As Maria Theresa grew older, her determination and commitment to her kingdom did not waver. Even in her later years, she continued to rule with the same passion and dedication that she had demonstrated since the beginning of her reign. Maria Theresa remained an active and engaged monarch well into her sixties, a rarity for her time. Despite the challenges brought by age, she still attended meetings, reviewed documents, and made important decisions for the good of her kingdom. She was known for her detailed knowledge of state affairs, often surprising her ministers with her sharp memory and understanding. During these later years, Maria Theresa continued to focus on the improvement of her kingdom. She continued to carry out reforms, particularly those that would help the most vulnerable among her subjects. She took measures to improve health care, setting up hospitals, and promoting vaccination. She also expanded the education system further, ensuring that more children had access to schooling. Maria Theresa's later years were also marked by a strong emphasis on peace. Having experienced the toll of war earlier in her reign, she was committed to maintaining peace and stability in her kingdom. She worked hard to foster good relations with other countries and took great care to avoid conflicts. In these years, Maria Theresa was not alone in her rule. Her son, Joseph II, served as her co-ruler. While their ideas sometimes clashed, with Joseph being more radical in his views, they worked together for the betterment of their kingdom. Maria Theresa's experience and wisdom complemented Joseph's energy and enthusiasm, making them a formidable ruling team. Maria Theresa's effective rule in her later years is a testament to her strength and dedication. Her age did not deter her from her duties. Instead, she used her wisdom and experience to guide her kingdom through a period of peace and progress. Her commitment to her people never waned, and she continued to work hard to ensure their welfare until the very end of her reign. Maria Theresa's later years as a ruler underscore her reputation as a truly great monarch, one who served her people with unwavering dedication and passion. In her later years, Maria Theresa faced a new challenge. 
planning for succession. She understood the importance of ensuring a smooth transition of power to safeguard the future of her kingdom. Her meticulous planning reflected her forward-thinking nature and her commitment to the stability of her empire. Maria Theresa had sixteen children, many of whom grew to hold significant positions across Europe. However, her eldest son, Joseph II, was her chosen successor. Maria Theresa made the decision to gradually transfer responsibilities to Joseph to prepare him for his future role as ruler. In 1765, ten years before Maria Theresa's death, Joseph was officially made co-ruler. Maria Theresa's approach to succession was to prepare Joseph through active involvement in governance. This method allowed Joseph to gain valuable experience while Maria Theresa was still there to provide guidance. Despite their differing opinions at times, Maria Theresa was always there to advise him and to offer her wisdom and experience. Maria Theresa's succession planning did not just involve her eldest son. She also arranged strategic marriages for her other children to secure alliances and strengthen her empire's position. One of her daughters, Marie Antoinette, married the future King Louis XVI of France, reinforcing the alliance between Austria and France. The careful planning for succession that Maria Theresa undertook in her later years shows her keen foresight and prudence. She was aware that the stability and prosperity of her kingdom hinged on the smooth transition of power. Her thoughtful and calculated steps to ensure a seamless succession further demonstrate her dedication to her people and her unwavering commitment to the prosperity of her empire. Through her succession planning, Maria Theresa secured the future of her kingdom. Her diligent efforts ensured that her legacy would continue through her successors, maintaining the stability and progress that she had tirelessly worked for throughout her reign. Her forward-thinking strategies provide valuable lessons in leadership and strategic planning, underlining her status as one of the most respected and effective rulers of her time. Maria Theresa's final years were marked by a steady continuation of her rule, despite the changes brought about by age and the increasingly prominent role of her son, Joseph II, as co-ruler. These years, while quieter than her earlier reign, were no less significant. They shaped the lasting legacy that Maria Theresa left behind. In her final years, Maria Theresa continued to work tirelessly for the welfare of her people. She was still deeply involved in matters of state, reviewing documents, making decisions, and guiding her son in his role as co-ruler. Despite the physical limitations brought about by age, her mind remained sharp and her commitment to her kingdom unwavering. In these years, Maria Theresa also faced personal struggles. The loss of her beloved husband, Francis Stephen, remained a deep sorrow, and she continued to wear mourning clothes in his memory. Yet even amidst her personal grief, she remained strong and resolute, her personal trials only reinforcing her empathy for her subjects. Maria Theresa's death in 1780 marked the end of an era. She had reigned for over forty years, and her rule had brought about significant changes in Austria. She had navigated war and peace, implemented major reforms, and seen her children rise to power in kingdoms across Europe. But Maria Theresa's legacy extended beyond her death. The changes she implemented, particularly in education and administration, had long-lasting effects. Her emphasis on education led to a more educated populace, while her administrative reforms improved the efficiency of the government. Furthermore, her strength in the face of adversity, her dedication to her people, and her ability to balance personal and political life left a lasting impact on how leadership was viewed. Maria Theresa's final years serve as a testament to her enduring strength and dedication. Even as her life drew to a close, she remained committed to serving her people to the best of her abilities. Her lasting legacy continues to inspire and remains a significant part of European history, reinforcing her status as one of the most respected and influential rulers of her time. Chapter 6. Legacy Even centuries after her death, Maria Theresa's legacy continues to be felt in Austria. Her reign transformed the country and laid the groundwork for future progress. The impact she left on her homeland is evident not only in its history, but also in the hearts of the Austrian people who still remember her with respect and affection. 
Under Maria Theresa's reign, Austria underwent significant changes. She carried out major reforms in the administration, education, and healthcare system. These changes significantly improved the lives of the Austrian people, fostering a more educated society and a stronger and more efficient government. These systems, which were established and strengthened under her rule, continue to form the basis of Austrian society today. Maria Theresa's focus on education left a lasting mark on Austria. She expanded access to education, recognizing it as a means of empowering her people. Her reforms included making education compulsory for both boys and girls, a revolutionary idea for her time. This focus on education resulted in a more literate populace and set Austria on a path towards intellectual growth and development. In the field of administration, Maria Theresa streamlined the government and made it more efficient. She centralized power and carried out financial reforms, ensuring the stability of the Austrian economy. The administrative structures that she put in place served as a model for future governments and contributed significantly to Austria's growth as a nation. Maria Theresa also had a profound impact on Austrian culture. Her love for music and dance fostered a rich cultural environment that continues to thrive. She was a patron of the arts, supporting musicians and artists, and her influence contributed to the flowering of Austrian music and arts during her time leaving the lasting cultural legacy. Maria Theresa's enduring legacy in Austria goes beyond these concrete changes. Her leadership style, characterized by strength, compassion, and determination, left a deep imprint on the Austrian people. Her ability to balance power and empathy, to make difficult decisions while still caring for her people, continues to inspire leaders in Austria and beyond. She is remembered not just as a great ruler, but also as a strong woman and a caring mother. In summary, Maria Theresa's legacy in Austria is multifaceted. From education to administration, from culture to leadership style, her influence is felt in many aspects of Austrian life. Even today, she is remembered and celebrated as one of the most impactful rulers in Austrian history. Her legacy continues to shape Austria, testifying to her successful reign and her enduring influence. Maria Theresa's influence was not limited to Austria alone. As a powerful ruler of one of the leading powers of the time, her decisions and actions had far-reaching effects. She left a significant mark on the European stage, shaping politics, alliances, and cultures beyond the borders of her own empire. One of the most significant aspects of Maria Theresa's European legacy is the web of strategic alliances she wove through her children's marriages. These alliances, often sealed with marriages into other royal families, not only strengthened Austria's position in Europe, but also influenced the political landscape of the continent. Her children ruled or were consorts in France, Naples, Parma, and Tuscany, spreading the Habsburg influence across Europe. Maria Theresa's defensive stance in the War of Austrian Succession and the subsequent Seven Years' War demonstrated her strength and resilience. These conflicts, which involved most of the great powers of Europe, were significant events in European history. Maria Theresa's successful defense of her right to rule in these wars marked her as a formidable monarch in Europe. Her reform policies also had a ripple effect across Europe. Other countries took note of the changes Maria Theresa implemented in Austria and were influenced by her innovative approaches to education and administration. Her focus on compulsory education was especially influential and marked a turning point in how education was viewed across Europe. Moreover, Maria Theresa's cultural impact extended across Europe. As a patron of the arts, she contributed to the enrichment of European culture, her love for music and the arts, her support for musicians and artists, all helped in shaping the cultural landscape of Europe. Maria Theresa's legacy in Europe is a testament to her strong leadership, wise diplomacy, and innovative reforms. Her influence extended far beyond the borders of her own kingdom, shaping the course of European history. As a female ruler in a time dominated by male monarchs, her successful reign broke barriers and left a lasting mark on the role of women in leadership. Today, Maria Theresa is remembered as one of the most influential figures in European history. 
Her impact on politics, culture, and society continues to resonate, solidifying her place as a great ruler not just in Austria, but across Europe. Maria Theresa holds a significant place in world history. As one of the most effective and revered rulers of her time, her impact extended far beyond her reign, influencing not only the immediate course of history, but also how we understand and study history today. As a female monarch in a predominantly male-led era, Maria Theresa broke many social norms and barriers. She ascended to the throne at a time when women's leadership was often questioned and disregarded. Her successful reign challenged these prejudices, and she became a symbol of women's strength and capability in leadership. Her life and rule continue to inspire historians and readers, serving as a beacon for gender equality. Maria Theresa's reign was marked by significant reforms in education, administration, and military affairs. These reforms were not only crucial for Austria, but were also groundbreaking at a global level. Her emphasis on compulsory education, for example, greatly influenced how societies worldwide view and value education. Her story is often referenced in discussions about educational reform and the role of the state in providing education. Her successful defense against the Prussian aggression during the War of Austrian Succession and her handling of the subsequent Seven Years' War are key historical events. These conflicts reshaped the geopolitical map of Europe, and Maria Theresa's role in these wars has been a significant focus of study for historians specializing in European history. Maria Theresa is remembered as a compassionate and pragmatic ruler. Stories of her personal connection with her subjects, her efforts to understand their grievances, and her dedication to their welfare have made her a beloved historical figure. She serves as an example of a ruler who effectively balanced power and empathy, a theme that remains relevant in today's leadership studies. Finally, Maria Theresa's legacy is preserved in the physical landscape of Austria and Europe. Many buildings and monuments commissioned or renovated during her reign, such as the Schönbrunn Palace, are important historical and cultural landmarks today. These landmarks serve as a constant reminder of her contributions and her place in history. Maria Theresa's story, her achievements, and her struggles continue to resonate in the annals of history. Her life and reign provide valuable insights into a critical period in European history and continue to be a source of inspiration for people around the world. As we look back at her life, we see not only a powerful ruler, but also a compassionate woman who left a lasting legacy in the world.